Decoding a PNG image in JavaScript. If you're interested in how to decode a PNG without using a library, I've outlined the steps I took to decode a simple PNG with explanations and code examples. The methods below are not made for efficiency and it is recommended to use an existing library for projects. Loading the file. In order to work on a PNG file, the raw data will need to be retrieved. This is done by using an XML HTTP request with the response type set to array buffer. const request equals new XML HTTP request, request.response type equals array buffer, request.add event listener, load event. Uh, we'll pass the event object to a function callback that's written inline. const array buffer equals e.target.response. If the array buffer is non is, is null, then we're going to throw a new error, no response. Um, comment this, the byte array to decode. Const byte array equals new uint8 array with the array buffer passed into the constructor. Then we are going to close our callback function and then close the function call that took the callback, so the add event listener callback. Request.addEventListener, listener the error event, a callback that takes zero parameters. Throw new error, an error has occurred on request. Close the callback function and close the uh, function call that adds the event listener. Request.open, we're going to do an HTTP GET request, and we're going to ask for foo.png, and I don't know what the last parameter true means. Request.send. Checking the signature. A PNG file must start with the following bytes. 137, 80, 78, 71, 13, 10, 26, and 10. I'm pretty sure that uh, the author here is using the decimal values for the bytes. Yes, that would make sense because 137 would not be a byte. Um, well, if it was if it was hex, right, it wouldn't have three places like that. It would only have two places. And I've seen the PNG signature before in hexadecimal, so I definitely do not recognize that. It is also recommended to check the signature of chunks explained in the next section that are constant when possible. This allows us to check the IHDR chunk as it must be the first chunk in a PNG file and the length is always 13. Really, always 13. I've seen the length 13 and was wondering about that. Given this information, we can check the PNG file starts with the following bytes. 137, 80, 78, 71, 13, 10, 26, 10, 0, 0, 0, 13, 73, 72, 68, and 82. Some code, const, signature. Uh, we're going to open our array literal and put 137, 80, 78, 71, 13, 10, 26, 10, 0, 0, 0, 13, 73, 72, 68, 82. Close the array literal and have a semicolon for good practice. We're going to do a for loop through all of the bytes of the signature. And if the byte in our array is not equal to the byte in our signature, then we have a problem. We're going to return false, right? Because this signature starts at the very beginning. And therefore, we can do this one to one comparison like that without applying an offset. So just byte array i not equal to signature i to make sure that the signature at the beginning of the file uh, lines up with the byte array representing the file, right? Okay, so let's uh, keep going, scrolling through here. Reading the chunk metadata. Before driving into how chunks are read, understanding what a chunk is and the structure of one is required. A PNG file has multiple chunks starting after the first eight bytes. These are reserved for the PNG file signature. All chunks are structured in this order. 1. Length, 4 bytes. This includes only the length of the data portion of the chunk with a maximum value of 2 to the power of 31. And it's 2 to the power of 31 instead of 2 to the power of 32 because they decided, um, I don't know who they, but whoever came up with the PNG spec was like, we want to make sure that languages that don't differentiate between signed and unsigned types can still uh, 
access the largest ch possible chunk size. And that is why it is 2 to the power of 31 rather than 2 to the power of 32. 2. Type 4 bytes. This is the type of chunk must be treated as binary values. 3. Data x bytes. Data in the trunk may be 0. Let me say that again. 3. Data x bytes. Data in the trunk may be 0. 4. CRC, 4 bytes. CRC calculated on the preceding bytes in the chunk excludes length. I do not know what CRC stands for. I believe it's cyclical something or other because I've seen it before, but I do not remember. All right. The IHDR, IDAT, and IN chunks are required. It is also possible to have multiple chunks of the same type. Armed with the knowledge of chunks, recall that the check in the previous section where some bytes appended to the PNG signature. The check bytes can be seen as the PNG signature plus IHDR chunk length plus IHDR chunk type. The code below reads all chunks metadata along with the position of where the data starts to make the chunks easier to work with. Comment. Bytes to uint32 converts the given bytes from the start to count to an unsigned 32-bit integer. Function, bytes to uint32, byte array, start, and count, and uh, just a placeholder, dot, 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 so we're going to fill that out later, I guess. Uh, const, um, this actually looks a little weird. Why is, hold on, I'm going to pause, make sure I understand this. All right, so I think bytes to uint32 is, I think that we're, what we're looking at is kind of pseudocode, and that's like a forward declaration just saying that that exists, I think. All right, let's just keep on reading. Const meta size equals four, const chunks equals an empty array. Let i equal png signature dot length. Comment, skip the png signature. While i is less than byte array dot byte length. So we're gonna loop through the rest of the bytes, but we wanna skip over that png signature. So we're inside the while loop, const data length equals bytes to uint32, byte array, i, and meta size. Um, so meta size, where was that? Meta size equals four. So I'm going to assume that we're going to start at i, and we're going to take uh, four bytes and get the uh, value that is described by those four bytes. Or would that be... Yeah, I think that's what's going on there. So const data length equals bytes to uint32, byte array. We're going to start at i. We're going to take four bytes. We're going to mash those bytes together to get a uint32. Yep, that makes sense, because we got four bytes, and that's going to create 32 bits. Um, and so basically, we're creating a 32-bit number from our stream of bytes, right? We're just smashing them together to get the data length that is encoded within the first four bytes. Then after we've got the data length, we're going to go i plus equals meta size, right? Because we're going to go to, we're going to skip over those four bytes that we just read. And const signature equals bytes to string byte array i meta size. So we're going to take another four bytes. We're going to smash all those four bytes together to get a new uint32, which will be the signature. And const type equals chunk signature type signature. So we're going to put that signature um, into I, an array. So I'm going to guess maybe some type of lookup table. Um, okay, so then after we've gotten those bytes, we're going to go i plus equals meta size to skip over the bytes we've already read. Const data start equals i. i plus equals data length. Um, now, why are we doing that before const plus? Okay, so data start equals i. So I'm not sure why we are doing this because it seems like right here that we jumped to the data the start of the data and then i plus equals data length it seems like we're jumping it almost seems like we're jumping over the data 
All right, so it looks like we're jumping over the data section right here. Uh, let's just keep going. So const crc equals bytes to uint32 byte array i meta size. Um, yeah, so it does look like we're we're jumping over the data, and just we're just trying to get these other headers. So that's why we're skipping over the data. Okay, that that makes sense. Okay, so then i plus equals meta size because we already. Uh, we already read these bytes, so we want to move our pointer within that array over the bytes that we just read to get this CRC integer. And const meta, okay, it's going to be an object literal, which has type signature CRC, and then it has a data object within the meta object that has a start that's set to data start, length that's start to data length. Oh, sorry, you can't see this. Um, so we have const meta, right? So this is our object literal. It has type, signature, CRC, data, and the start and the length of that data. And we can fill out the start and length because we already have them. And then uh, we're going to, I thought CRC we already had, so I'm not sure why those are not filled out as well. But let's just keep reading. Uh, if type exists, chunks.push, and then push the metadata. So we're going to uh, push just the metadata into a chunks array. And then in must be the last chunk. So if type equals in, we're going to break out of that loop. Okay, so let's keep reading. Parsing ihdr. The ihdr chunk has the following form. 1. Width, 4 bytes. 2, height, 4 bytes, 3, depth bit, 1 byte, 4, color type, 1 byte, 5, compression method, 1 byte, 6, filter method, 1 byte, 7, interlace method, 1 byte. From the start of the data of the chunk, the values can be retrieved by reading the bytes and offsetting by that amount for the next value. Parsing IDAT. IDAT chunk, or chunks, contain the image data. It uses an LZ77 derivative and must be decompressed before use. If there are multiple IDAT chunks, the data must be concatenated before decompression. Okay, so that's an important aspect that um, I don't think I realized. You got to take all the IDAT chunks and concatenate them together before you decompress it. So um, I don't know why you would um, make more than one IDAT chunk if they all have to be concatenated together anyways. Um, but I'm sure that might have something to do with, you know, sending pack or packets over a network and uh, checking data for integrity. I'm going to guess that's why. I, I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, that makes sense, because if you have more than one IDAT chunk, then you can check those checksums uh, more often and check for corruption. Okay, okay, that makes kind of sense why you would have more than one IDAT. Okay, let's read this code right here. Comment, I use Paco for decompressing. Const compressed equals byte array dot slice start comma start plus length. Const decompressed equals paco.inflate and compressed put into there. Uh, so what are we doing here? Byte array dot slice start and then the start plus the length. Okay, so we're we're taking a subsection of of that array of bytes, which is just the uh, raw data we're concerned with. And oh no 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 we're start yeah, it's a subsection, because start and start.length. Um, yeah, so we're taking a subsection of the array, and that's our compressed data, right? So that's the IDAT chunk. And then Paco.inflate, we're going to inflate the compressed and get it decompressed. So I want to scroll up here and look at uh, start byte array. Okay, so we had the data start, data start, data length. Okay, so that's the metadata, and then byte array. Okay, so byte array. So I thought chunks.push. So where are we concatenating together the um, IDAT? 
Uh, bytes to unit 32, bytes to string, const data length. So I'm not sure where we are concatenating the IDAT together, because it said that those chunks need to be concatenated before, before we do uh, this right here. Uh, we need to make sure that this byte array represents the concatenated IDAT sections. I'm not sure if that was up there in the example. I could be missing it. Uh, but let's just keep on reading. Uh, we want to get the general idea. Once decompressed, the data can be read through additional work. Will need to be done. Once decompressed, the data can be read through additional work. Will need to be done. That sentence seems kind of weird. Once decompressed, the data can be read through additional work will need to be done. Okay, that sentence is just weird. It's not me. An extra byte is at the start of each scan line, a row of pixels, which tells us what filter is used. Yeah, so PNG format has a filter function where we try to... Um, the lines above and below in an image will tend to be very similar to one another color-wise, right? Because um, images tend to have continuity, right? And the LZW compression algorithm uh, only, only works on like a 1D data stream, and it has no concept of two-dimensional data. And to make the LZW compression uh, more efficient, uh, there's this pre-processing step in PNG where you apply what's known as a filter function to all of the rows of pixels, and that filter function can look at the line above to um, extrapolate what the line below should be, uh, generally. Um, and by using the filter function first, uh, the LZW compression will be more efficient. Uh, so let me read that uh, paragraph again, since I kind of went on a rant. Once decompressed, the data can be read through additional work, will need to be done. An extra byte is at the start of each scan line, a row of pixels, which tells us which filter was used. In the case of the subfilter, the following is used. Comment. Filtered bytes represents bytes that have already been filtered. Byte offset represents the byte to start from in the unfiltered bytes array. Bytes per pixel is used to know how many bytes to subtract to get to the previous sample. Function set subline unfiltered bytes, byte offset, byte array, start, length, bytes per pixels, and the body of the function. We're going to loop through, uh, i is going to go through every single uh, byte in the length of the byte array and it looks like we're missing okay so we're going through start and length oh okay so no start we're gonna we're gonna start within the byte array at start and then we're gonna take length number of bytes but that length is not the length of the byte array. It's how many uh, bytes to take. And did it already say that in the documentation here? I don't think it did. OK, so we're going to take as many bytes as we need from the byte array. We're going to take length number of bytes. And of course, we're going to have to apply that offset to start at the correct position within the array. So offset equals byte offset plus i minus bytes per pixels, and that'll give us a pointer um, into the array. Const current equals byte array start plus i. Const previous equals offset greater than or equal to byte offset, question mark, unfiltered bytes offset, uh, otherwise zero. Okay, and then unfiltered bytes dot push current plus previous, and then a mask of one byte. Okay, so let's try to make sense of this for a second. Um, what are we doing? Um, so starting with the byte offset in i, so that byte offset in i would give us kind of like the um, correct position. I'm not sure why we're subtracting bytes per pixel after that. Um, 
I don't know if that's like a off by one um, error correction because it's because I would expect bytes per pixel to actually be like a. I would honestly expect this to be byte offset plus i and then multiplied by bytes per pixel and not a subtraction. So I don't quite understand why that is written that way. Um, I'm, so obviously I don't understand what it's actually doing. Um, so current equals byte array start plus i. Um, so this would be the current byte. OK, so this makes sense. So we're getting the current byte here. Um, and then offset, and this is unfiltered bytes. Uh huh. Okay, so I think we are, it looks like this is some type of copy operation. And, uh, okay, that makes sense because we have the unfiltered bytes, and then we have. Uh, the byte array, which I guess is is the filtered. And so that would make sense for this to be some type of copy operation. Um, so previous equals offset greater than or equal to byte offset. Um, and if it is unfiltered bytes offset, otherwise zero. So I think this is a range check, I think. Um, unfiltered bytes dot push current plus previous with the mask. Okay, so I should probably look at that a little bit more, but let's just read through the rest of this. Unfil. God damn it. All right, so unfiltered bytes arrays now contain the pixel information starting from the upper left of the image. More info on filters documentation can be found here. Summary, reading a simple PNG in JavaScript is not too bad once the structure is known. I would recommend using a better way to read bytes and converting them, as it seems to be, part, be the part that gave me the most trouble in keeping the code clean. The finished simple PNG loading code for this post can be found at https colon slash slash github.com mwgithub slash basic dash loaders slash tree slash master slash source slash png. Additional reading. The PNG specification, which can be found here, is a great resource on working with the file format. Unrelated but also interesting is how PNG versioning is done and which can be found here. And uh, this post was by Michael Wang. Um, so so yeah, um, I'm just trying to document everything I'm reading because there's a lot of reading that I need to do. And uh, sometimes you feel like you're getting nowhere as you're reading. So I just want to have something to show for it by recording this. So uh, that is Michael Wang's post on uh, decoding a PNG image in JavaScript.